Hello my friends, previously I've reviewed and overclocked the Ryzen 5 1606 core CPU. Today I'm gonna take a look at another Ryzen 5 CPU, but a quad core version, namely the AMD Ryzen 5 1400. I'll be pairing this one up with 3200 MHz DDR4 M2 from G-Skill, the Flare X kit. Currently the 1606 core variant comes in at 240 US dollars, while this 1400 quad core only costs around 190 dollars, depending on where you purchase it from. However, does it make sense to save money and go for the 1400 instead of the 1600? I'm very curious myself, let's go! Being a non-XQ of this lineup, we're getting a stock cooler AMD's Wraith Stealth, which obviously isn't as beefy as the Spire that comes with the 1600. The rest is identical, the CPU, sticker and installation instructions. First of all, the AMD Ryzen 5 1400 Summit Ridge goes into the AM4 CPU socket. Woo, what a surprise! Unlike the higher end Ryzen 5 and 7 models, this one is only equipped with 4 cores and 8 threads, with the help of SMT. 3.2 GHz base clock, 3.4 GHz turbo, 65 Watt TDP, 14 nanometer process, 2 MB L2 and 8 MB of L3 cache, 64 GB max RAM capacity, dual channel DDR4-2660 controller and as promised by AMD, even an unlocked multiplier on the cheaper model. So, as you've seen, the Ryzen 1400 is a slimmed down CPU spec-wise, compared to the previous Ryzen chips I had the pleasure to test. As for my testing motherboard, since I don't have a B350 board, which admittedly would be a more realistic setup, I'll go with my trusty ASUS Prime X370 Pro. Also watch out for my overclocking video with this specific setup very soon. But enough of that, let's bring on those benchmarks, shall we? Okay, quite honestly, I personally was a bit disappointed. I expected more from this chip being a 4-core 8-thread CPU. Still, one can't say this processor doesn't perform. First of all, I probably should apologize for not having the equivalent i5 variant to compare the Ryzen 1400 with. In terms of pricing, it should have been the i5-7400, I guess. But I could only include the 7600K, which costs somewhere around $240 or so. This 1400, however, comes in at plus minus $190. So it is a bit unfair, I'm sorry about that. But that aside, when it comes to rendering, the Ryzen 5 1400 does manage to keep up extraordinarily well with the 7600K. In fact, it even beats the i5, albeit not by much. Very close, actually. But someone that doesn't want to pay much for a CPU most likely isn't a renderer or video editor. It's gamers that are constantly on the hunt for the best bang for the buck processor. To be honest, why not? But this is exactly where you should watch out. Overall, the 1400 does well, not a bad gaming CPU. 
and for the most part it's a bit faster than the FX9590. In many games I've tested the 1400 unfortunately drops behind the 7600K often by a noticeable amount of FPS. I'd be very curious on how the i5 7400 would perform in my tests. But hold on there, why watch out you might ask? Well, in heavily multi-threaded game titles such as Crisis 3, a perfect example, I did in fact experience some kind of micro stuttering with this Quad Core Ryzen 5 1400. Usually such only occurs in Crisis 3 when the core count is below 4 or when modules come into play. Linus from Linus Tech Tips has a great explanation for this and the reason behind this is that this specific quad-core model doesn't have all of its cores on the same CCX. There are two CCX units but the cores are shared basically which can lead to massively decreased performance in some cases. And while the frame rate may look good on paper, the actual gaming experience with that nasty micro stuttering caused by the CPU isn't a guest one would really like to welcome. The Ryzen 5 1600 6-core variant doesn't suffer from any performance penalty like this. Luckily, the majority of games play very well and smoothly, just with a lower frame rate on average compared to the more expensive processors. The power consumption is pretty damn low and pretty much identical to the one of the i5 7600K. The temperatures are really good with just 35 degrees Celsius at max with my AIO liquid cooler, 54 degrees with the not so beefy included stock cooler, which however is extremely silent even on full load. So who should buy this Ryzen 5 1400? Well, I have mixed feelings here. If you want to save some money and upgrade sometime later, it may be a suitable CPU, pretty decent rendering performances offered and same goes for gaming. Yes, lower frame rates, but those are still good and overclocking will definitely help in that regard. There, a spoiler for you. What bothers me a lot is the fact that how the cores are arranged on the CC axis on the Quad Core Ryzen 5 models. It makes it hard for me to seriously recommend this chip for gaming, especially given the relatively high pricing at plus minus $190. At that price that uncorrectable CCX layout is a big no-no for me. For rendering, thanks to overclocking I'd say you may as well get this Ryzen 1400. If you want a game, you may be better off with an Intel i5. I still can recommend the AMD Ryzen 5 1400 but the CPU induced micro stuttering in Crisis 3 is reason enough for me to only give this processor my bronze award. What do you think about this specific Ryzen CPU? Do you find it just as disappointing as I do? Let me know. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.